Hi guys, it's Troy at the Full Setup here, back with another video for you. And today we are building a full custom CPU and GPU water loop in my Project Storm Trooper PC. This is in a Fantex P300 case, and I managed to build this for just under £200. Now, I've wanted to get into water cooling for ages, but there was two huge problems, and this is a problem for me as a YouTuber, is that I need all my PCs ready available so I can plug new hardware in. So I knew that I was going to have to build another Intel rig, which I'm going to be building next month. And the other part, really, it's price, isn't it? Water cooling is really expensive. Now, you might see some really cheap water cooling builds. Like, I even priced up doing a full CPU and GPU loop for, like, about £130. But that was going to be using copper radiators, barb fittings. It wasn't going to look very nice. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, I might as well have just bought an AIO and not called the graphics card. It just... It just wasn't going to be nice. But I still wanted to build something on a budget. So I set myself a budget of £200. And from that, I've been able to use compression fittings. We've got an EK water block. You know, pump reservoir. Look at it. The thing just looks beautiful. Now, as for that budget, the £195 budget. So this is everything on screen. Um, and there will be full links in the description to where I bought everything. The one thing I haven't included is fans. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in the video. Um, and we're going to go in in a minute. We're going to have a full look at the build as well. I'm going to do a start to finish build for you as well. Now, one thing to mention is this is the first time I've done water cooling. It's, you know, I've had a few practice runs, but this is the first time. So I'm a little bit more focused on just getting the build done. Now, all the parts you're going to see in this video, I've already done separate videos in the Project Stormtrooper playlist. They're in the comments section. So make sure you check out that playlist if you like any of these parts. Anyway, I'm going to take you in for the build and then I'm going to come back at the end of the video and just tell you a few things that I learned whilst making it, maybe some pros and cons of water cooling as well. So we're going to start off with um, fitting the water block first. Now, I do have full extended videos of all the parts that I bought already on the channel for anyone that's just tuning in for the first time. And the water block we're using today, this is the Bixki water block. This is £13, £13 um, from Banggood. Um, you might have seen this one recently as well because um, I think Linus used the X299 version in his cheap water cooling video. Um, and it was within a few degrees of an EK Supremacy, which is a lot more money. So I'm just going to put a little bit of thermal paste on there. And yeah, very happy with this block so far. Obviously, I haven't done any thermal testings yet, but it hasn't leaked. I've had a lot of this stuff on the bench for a couple of weeks now, just running around water. I haven't had any leaks, so I'm happy with that. Nice and easy to fit, comes with a nice back plate, like I said, more of that on the channel. Now, one thing I like to do when I'm ever screwing on water blocks, CPU blocks, I always try to alternate the corners and just give a few turns. This way you're not putting too much pressure on any side, you're not sort of making it buckle up. I will also apologize that there will be some background noise in this video today because I'm waiting on a few really important parcels, so I've got to have the window open. But yeah, then just go around, just tighten up each one at a time. And then you have a finger tight, you don't, even with screw ones, you don't want to go too tight, especially if you're fitting it outside your case because it will bend your motherboard. There we go, finger tight on, nice. I'm also going to remove the M.2 drive as well for now because obviously that's going to be, and if there were any leaks, I don't want to, you know, lose my motherboard and my M.2 drive would be a... So we're going to have to fit the radiator and the pump all in one hit. So this pump reservoir combo, you can tell I've had too many AIOs in my life. This is just the magical DCP450. Now, as you can see from where I've drained my loop, this isn't from leaks. I've got like some red from my red dyes and I will clean it up when I get to the final build. I'll do that. As for the radiator, it's the Freeze Mod 240 radiator. Now, the one thing that I really regret was not buying a chunkier radiator. As you can see, it's only a 25 mil thick radiator. I could have spent like 10 pound more and got a thinner radiator. So this is the Freeze Mod 240, but it is a copper radiator, no aluminium. And the reason I'm having to fit all of this is because I need to get these cables down through this hole in here. I can just sit that in there. I'm gonna show you a little trick with my fans in a second as well, for anyone that hates. So yeah, here's my little radiator trick. Now, as you can see, I've got a screw in here. You'll just be able to see it and a screw in here. And then it goes here and then here, which you can't see obviously here because you can't see in the camera. But I'm alternating, you know, going like diagonals with the screws. So the fans are held in place. These are not true industrials. And I know that's probably why you're like, this is why you haven't included the fans in the price because then it'd be a £240 loop. I already own these fans. We'll talk about the fans at the end of the video. But what this allows you to do is just essentially 
line up your radiator. You're not holding fans in place as well. You know, that's just like the radiator is already held in place. Obviously, we need to stick some more, more in there. It's that easy, and because I know it's so annoying sometimes trying to hold a load of fans in place. Ren, bang, radiator fitted. Just got to put two more screws in, but the holes are already lined up. It's that easy to install a radiator. One annoying thing with a Fantex P300 is that the holes for the fans they don't go up very high. I reckon I can get a little bit more height out of it. It's something I was looking at for the final build as well, with sort of an angle grinder to push it up a bit. Um, I might even even if I decide to go for a 280 radiator, I might even have to take the top power switch out and rig in another power switch as well because most of the 280s I'm looking at won't fit in here. But um, one thing I knew when I was specking out this build is that I wanted to do this bit of the run, put it in this little tube bit before I did anything else because as soon as I start to run other tubes it's going to get in the way. And I've already come over the first hurdle, this is the hurdle of not putting things in the case, um, which is why I bought a couple of rotary fittings. Um, so this is a 90 degree, now these are all barrow fittings that I'm using, if you want to see these a little bit more in detail, check out the video. And then we have the fittings on the end as well, I totally forgot what size fittings I'm using. Uh, 3858, I'm using 3858 fittings. So the problem is, I want to come out of here like that into there and see we're right in the way of the ram socket. So I'm thinking we put this little bad boy in here and then here we have a 90 degree. So that one was a 45 degree. I might refer to it as a 90. So that's a rotary as well. Barrow fittings are very stiff again with a 3858 fitting on the end. So we're going to put that one that sort of thing so we should potentially be able to get the hell away from our ram and I can easily get ram in and out as well definitely happy that I bought an extra couple of rotary fittings I thought I might have needed those they were about £4.50 each a lot cheaper than some other ones on the market as well like I said very stiff but quite happy with them and the next thing we need to do is actually remove that M.2 drive. And now, as for a graphics card, I had to pick one of my older ones that I wanted to go in here. Um, and I'm also one thing I've really got to pay attention to as well. As you can see, eventually I'm going to have a thicker radiator as well. Now, probably be some space saving I can do with maybe a pump reservoir, but I'd like a thicker radiator, which really limits me in the P300 case to an ITX graphics card. Now, I did have a GTX 970 lying around. This is the Asus GTX 970 Mini. Um, and I've got a full video showing how I fitted this water block. I've finally got some taller heat sinks for the VRM. Have a look at that there. So this is the EK Thermosphere. Now, I could have obviously bought a much cheaper universal GPU water block. But one thing that I wanted to do was just have something that's, the fact that it was universal and that I knew I could buy loads of brackets for it and use it in the future for when I do have a graphics card in here that's got a full cover block sort of led me towards paying the extra money for it. Now I could have bought an EK Supremacy Universal, but the problem was it only came to about here and then I was gonna need all these extension tubes and extra rotary fittings. So it worked out cheaper to buy the Thermosphere. My only regret, as I did mention, is that I didn't get the nickel version because it was like one or two pounds more. I was so focused on the budget that I didn't get the nickel version. But yeah, for me, a GTX 970, you know, I the games that I play, like I say, this is my little personal gaming rig, like as much as i would love to play them all at 144 frames per second at ultra i'm really not that fussed because the thing i'm focusing on the most is killing people because i'm an angry guy but as you can see already with the space here i am gonna have to get an itx graphics card for this so i think i'm probably gonna get like a gtx 2060 hopefully when they launch them they launch like a mini version so i'll review it for a few months on the channel test out with loads of cpus and then we'll just stick it in here oh yeah or maybe a 2070 mini i'm i really want to know what the how they perform before i buy one a couple of things as well i wish that i bought were all matching stoppers because i've got a silver one the ek thermosphere comes with silver ones so i managed to take one of the black ones off of this and put it on there i am going to get some better braided cables as well with some cable combs
so there is only one thing left to do fill the bad boy up now i remembered right at the end of doing all this that you, you know it's good to use like washing up liquid or something to get the fittings on so it was a struggle it was a struggle now i'm using mayhem's pastel red So that was getting everything put together and as you can see the build looks absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy with this. I've made the PC that I wanted to make. When I first seen the Fantex P300 case, the only thing I just saw was a Stormtrooper. I wanted to make a PC, a Stormtrooper, come home, you know, hard day at the Empire, doing horrible things all day, he just wants to kick back and build a gaming PC. Now I know a lot of people would say that means just an all white and black PC but I really wanted to get the red in there. I think the red really suits this build and I'm someone that doesn't like the colour red. I've never really been a fan of the colour red in, for anything really. Um, the fan grills as well, the custom fan grills, they've been sent from Savin PC as well so I'll link him up. He sent them over really quick to me over from America as well. Love the look on the fan grills as well. Now it didn't go perfectly well, there are a couple of problems. First thing was just me. Like I said, first time done water cooling, and I mentioned it in the video, the tubing. Just get the tubing wet, it goes on really easy. I'm like trying to freaking, you know, I always thought I was going to break the PCIe slot at some point. So yeah, you just get them wet, they slip on fine. You don't have to tighten compression fittings all the way. You're going to see that some of them haven't been tightened all the way up. You really don't need to, you just get them tight, and then you give them another half a turn. Now, there was an issue. There was something that I did run into straight away. Now, the EK Thermosphere, as you can see, it doesn't cover the VRM on the GPU. Now, that was getting hot at just stock settings because I've got no air coming into it. No air at all. As soon as I max the power limit out, I mean, no over overclocking, just maxing the power limit out to stabilize those clocks, the system crashed after about 20 minutes. It's got really hot. So what you can't see here is behind Boba Fett, I've actually got a 90 mil fan. All I did was just put a little bit of Gorilla Glue on two of the corners, little 90 mil cryo rig fan, and I've just stuck it to the EK Thermosphere. Since then, I've been able to overclock this 200 megahertz on the core and I think 400 megahertz on the memory. I've only got it running at 600 RPM, so you can't even hear it. But yeah, definitely. If you're looking at doing a cheap solution, cheap um, overclocking without using a full block you are going to need some sort of air on your VRM you are just going to need it even at stock settings because it was getting very very hot indeed um, any other issues like I said I would have wished that I'd spent an extra £10 on a thicker radiator the temperatures are very good you know I'm happy with them they're not brilliant but the one thing to mention about this is this PC is silent the notches are set to 800 rpm um, the rear fans are set to 600 and that one's set to 600. You can't hear this PC. When I turn the fans up to about 1500 RPM, it doesn't actually get that much cooler. Probably about two or three degrees it gets cooler. But generally, I'm quite happy with it. I'd rather it be quiet and a little bit hotter. And I've always sort of been that sort of guy anyway. Um, the RAM, that sorted. Um, there was an issue with that RAM that I thought was going on for a while. Sounds like loads of issues here. Basically, I just got some, what's the freaking stuff? The Isopro alcohol and just cleaned, just cleaned the contacts. So the contacts must have just got some dirt on it. Um, so that's no longer, as you can see, it's just gone off. So that's no longer causing an issue. So would I recommend someone doing this? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. If you've built loads of PCs and you're like, well, I need something next, I would I would definitely go with water cooling. I'm, I'm, I was really happy with this. I know... When you look at it, that's £200, right? And I shouldn't have even water cooled an i5-8400 and 970. I, I get that. I know a lot of people are going to say that. And I could have spent that £200 more on a GPU and sold my 970. I could have bought maybe a 91070 or a 1080. I get that. But I've got lots of PCs. I wanted a water cooled PC, but I didn't want to spend a fortune. And I think I've done very well. Um, I think it's been very good as a first go into water cooling. And I can actually reuse some of these parts. 
you know, if I build up, built the 130 pounds loop, probably anything except the CPU block, because that was the one I was always going to use, it probably would have just gone in the bin. The pump, uh, it's fine for a system that size. It's it's only an AIO speed pump, so don't don't put too much stuff with it. But yeah, all in all, so the last thing was fans. I forgot about the freaking fans. Why didn't I include the price of fans? Reason for not including the price of fans, and I know what a lot of you are thinking, £40 fans, £195 build, now it's a £235 build. I know what you're thinking. The reason is, is because when you get into water cooling, you've probably already built a few PCs, you've probably bought CPU coolers, you've bought cases, you've probably bought an AIO cooler, you've probably replaced the fans on that because you didn't like them or they were too loud. So you've got fans. I've got like a stacking box full of fans just that I've accumulated in the last year mostly just out of cases just fans so you've got fans and you don't need Noctua's Noctua's sorry I say Noctua I know everyone says Noctua you don't need Noctua's do you? You, you you could just use any cheap fan something like an Arctic F9 so that's why I didn't include the price of fans so I've been waffling on for ages now so I'm going to leave the video where it is so I just want to know would you consider building this for £200? Do you think that I've got a good deal? Do you think I should have spent the money on something else? You know, let me know your thoughts in the description below. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, if you're just getting into water cooling, I've got loads of links and videos that I can send you. Make sure you check out the playlist as well. And I'm not done with this PC yet. We've still got upgrades to go. So make sure you subscribe to the Project Stormtrooper playlist as well. Thank you for watching.